up the volume too. Yeah. So like if I'm reading here, will it, will it be like too loud? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to men. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the Son of God. Amen. 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 Well, hello, my name is Aaron. I'm going after Matthew 27, 54. Surely this man was the Son of God. I was supposed to write something that had to do with my moment that I realized that Jesus was the Son of God. And it's not one single thing. Um, it's a lot of little things. I don't think that one big event really shocked me to becoming a Christian. I always considered myself a Christian. I grew up in Catholic school and went to Catholic church. But somewhere around the mid-70s, my family and I, with many others, stopped going to church. Always wondered why there was a mass exodus from the church at this time. I have my theories, but that is a subject for another day. I started to go to a non-denominational church in 1980 when I was 18. It seemed like many small events got me to this point. As Winston Churchill once said, history turns on small hinges. So I relate a few big things as stated. As I was in a small house church right after I turned 19, we were all praying one evening, and a prophecy, out went, a prophecy went out saying, I, the Lord, will shake this house. A few days later in the evening, the house shook like there was an earthquake. Only our house. I remember this quite well, and I was impressed. No way could anyone say that this prophecy did not come to pass. Then I was with the Fisherman's Net Church in the mid-90s. And during worship service, for just a few seconds, it looked like a wind blew through the sanctuary, just like the Holy Spirit would. My wife, Carol, looked at me and said, did you see that? Yes, I did, but I did not write it down with exact date, information, people there, etc. When I mentioned it to Carol recently, she could not remember at all. Shows the importance to write these things down and date them. Now, looking back, I should have kept some sort of book where I write things down. These two are examples of group experiences. I have many personal experiences I have written down some, but regret that I did not keep some sort of supernatural journal my whole life. I write things down now, but to remember dates, who I was with, etc., from some past events, this is tricky, but I only have a vague memory. Like I said, I plan to write down what I recall. And many things have amazed me in my life, but I'm surprised that I kept really very sloppy records at all. And I'm sure if we all soul searched, we would have many supernatural events to share. And if anyone has any, I'd like to hear them. But as I said, there's been many small things that led me to realize that Jesus was the Son of God. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen.
one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the, pallet, of the place of where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing near. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, please tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go and find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave him his, me his message. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Mike Carpenter. When I was young, uh, there were three things that I wanted most in life. To be married, to serve the Lord with a person I cared very much about, and to be able to collaborate in worship with one of the greatest worship leaders of my generation, Pastor Dan Gardner. I was blessed with the first, then the second. But the third dream died as the responsibilities, and rightfully so, of a husband and father took front and center. The dream of worshiping when Pastor Dan died. The tomb was set. The stone rolled over. The entrance sealed. I had lost track where Pastor Dan was. One decade goes by. Two decades go by, three decades go by. Do you believe that as you follow him, God will fulfill the desires of your heart? Amen. Amen. I was attending Rock Age Community Church, but it was about to close its doors for good. It was recommended to us that we try attending Christian Church for All Nations. Never heard of it. The church that I was attending is closing. I had no choice but to find a new church. To me, the church that was recommended was completely random. So who I asked? So, who, so I asked, who is leading worship? Pastor Dan Gardner. Almost 30 some years later, God brought that to pass in my life. Amen. Amen. So I was here in this place almost two years ago to the day that the stone was rolled away and after being up for the worship of Pastor Dan, the tomb is now empty. The gifts that God has placed in me are no longer buried, but alive and active to be used in the church today.
now we look at my journey. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened here the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing and that they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and at the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Amen. Lord. I'd like to share with you a little bit about my church. The Emmaus Road, that town has always meant much to me. The reason being is when you truly have the revelation that Jesus Christ died and rose from the grave. Both in your heart and in your mind, life truly really changes and then life opens up. My journey starts at an early age. I can remember dealing with spiritual things very young, especially in the way of dreams and night visions. At the age of 15, a friend of mine invited me to church. In that youth service, I received Christ as my Savior. Unfortunately, I didn't go back and wander spiritually until the age of 19. At that time, I met a girl who really to the Lord. She shared the working of the Holy Spirit with me. Amen. I had never known a book in this truly full way. And finally, all the spiritual turbulence that I experienced in my life made sense. Mm -hmm. As a thank you to that young lady, I asked her to marry me. <laughs> and she's still here with me today. Amen. We have two incredible adult children. The eldest, my daughter Sarah, who at the age of two was tied to the Wikipedia. By the grace of God, 27 years later, not only has he delivered her of that, she's 
She's been a children's church pastor, married to a wonderful man named Justin, a second son to me. And now we have our first grandchild. Amen. Who's <laughs> My youngest son, Christopher, who most of you know here, I had the privilege of tag team preaching with him on Good Friday. It's wonderful, so proud of him. Amen. Amen. And he was born to establish worship in the temple. Mm -hmm. Nothing has blessed my life more than serving Jesus Christ together with my family, yeah. and sharing his word. Amen. Throughout my journey, the comings and goings, the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, regardless of all these things, the Lord has sustained us and shown his love to us. Mm -hmm. And of the two travelers on the road to Emmaus who walked with Christ that day, my heart still burns within me when that he speaks. It ignites my spirit, whether through scripture, through song or through prophecy. This is Easter. His word is alive. Amen. Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. He is risen. Hallelujah.
Now, when opportunities come up, we have police volunteers. So if you're looking to serve, the food pantry runs from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. So if you are interested and you want to serve uh, with the food pantry, then on Wednesdays, contact Eddie uh, Jones. That's the person to contact. But I should be able to help you. And of course, our Sunday services are at 11 a.m. May 1st, we'll be having a quarterly breakfast as well. So we're grateful for those who have joined us today. We'd like to honor you, not as visitors, but as guests. And we have a saying at Christian Church for All Nations, if you're looking for a church, where is the share with you all briefly such rich testimonies have gone forth and it's just so awesome to hear when others speak for how the Lord has worked in their lives and you see the fruit of working in their lives when it goes into the family and it is so awesome but this morning I wanted to share briefly pertaining to talking about resurrection our resurrection of our Lord and Savior and I want to look at briefly Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, Matthew 28, 1 through 10. And the word of God says, Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook with fear because it became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who had been crucified, but he is not here, for he has risen, just as he said, come. See the place where he is lying. Verse number seven, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them, greeted them, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Final verse, verse 10. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and they will see me. Now when we look at all these different things and what was being shared, and I look reflect on these two berries that went to the place of death, they went to where death was lying, not looking to find life. Because if you're going to visit somebody's tomb or visit somebody's grave, this means their paths. And we see where the stone that was there that sealed the grave. And we look at situations in our life where we think that something the Lord has given to us. And Pastor Wayne spoke about the three things that God had spoke with him. He had let one of those things go. But decades later, it came to pass. See, sometimes we look at our situation that appear to be dead, and we look at it as if the situation has flatlined. And when something flatlines, there's no activity. And then we start to question, well, God, you know, I'm telling you, this is what I want. I'm telling you, this is my desire. But all these years have passed away. I thought you said such and such. I thought you said you would give me the desires of my heart. Because sometimes things may have to go through that period of inactivity. And maybe if years go by, what if 30 years go by? And then finally the Lord speaks for that vision. But God had to do that for a reason. And God had to die for a reason. He had to die so that we might have life in him. Amen. They found what appeared to be a dead situation. Those two berries, the situation there said death, death, death. And maybe the situation in your life right now says death, 
death, death. The situation is flatlined. The situation says no activity but God. No period but comma, but God, comma. He comes in with the paddle, like when they have to resuscitate someone that has a heart issue. What do they do? They get the paddles out to try to jumpstart their heart, to get it to go again so that they can breathe again. And God is going to do that within our lives. So it doesn't matter if a year has passed. It doesn't matter if five years have passed, 20 years. When God says it, when God puts it in your spirit, that desire is here. Though the situation may look dead. God will bring forth and he will move every obstacle out of the way. Amen. God will always manifest a way out. That stone, it said no access. That stone said no entry. It was no way getting in and there was no getting way out. But in all of that, God made a way for it to come to pass. God made a way for that stone to be moved out of the way. That stone that is said to have weighed between 2,000 and 4,000 pounds. 2,000 and 4,000 pounds. See, they rolled the stone into position. But it was easier to roll it in position and to basically release the stone because of the way it was positioned and the grooves that it was set in place. So when that thing was set in place, 2,000, 4,000 pounds was just not going to be easily moved out of the way. But God sent forth an angel to move that out of the way. And he sent those angels to let those Marys know that what was dead is alive. What you thought was dead, what you thought had bloodline, God is alive and well. They had to be reminded of what God was going to do. They needed to see for themselves. And I'm here to tell you, think about that situation. Think about the dream, the vision. But you got to hold but you say, Pastor Daniel, 10 years have passed, but God spoke it to you. You hold tight because God will move every boulder, every stone out of the way because his words are yes and amen. And when God gives a promise, he is not a man that will lie. He will bring it to pass. And that's what's happened to those barriers. There was barriers in the journey. But again, God will always manifest a way to move out. And not only will he manifest a way, he will give his word as a source of comfort and reminding of what the Lord said. Because he, the angel told these women, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And he said, I know. I know who you're looking for. But rest assured, he's not here. He has risen just like he said. And the angel said, come, see. Come see for yourself. Because oftentimes doubt may set in. And the angel says, you want to see it for yourself. you got to know the word of God for yourself. Because when in doubt, you have to check it out. When you want to read his word, you want to fact check something, the facts are right here. He's given us 66 books. He's given us access to find the answers that we're looking for. Why are we looking to and why are we looking fro? The Lord says, I have given you the resource manual. Will you take a hold of what my word says? Will you take comfort in what my word says? Do not be afraid of a fiery trial that you're going through. Do not be afraid of the storm that you're going through. I spoke my word over your life. I'm giving you the keys. I'm giving you the tools. But will you just check it out for yourself? Will you come to know me for yourself? Amen. And as they did, they went, they saw, and when they said, when they said in verse 7, to go quickly, don't delay, and tell the disciples that he is risen. And what did they do? And they left quickly. Because the message was burning in their spirit. They said they were, it was said in verse number eight, they left the tomb quickly. There was great fear in them, but there was also great joy because of what they just encountered. They're like, I can't believe, I'm so astonished, I'm so amazed, this is amazing. I got to go do what I was told to do. I got to deliver the message of Christ. I got to let these disciples know what the angel has said. Church, this is what we are called to do as the message is deposited within us. As we receive it, we may be fearful, but there's joy that's going to overtake amazement. God, you're marvelous, and I just 
met them and greeted them. Jesus will always meet you where you are. He always has time for you. And then they came up, and what did they do? They took hold of his feet, and they worshiped. Because when you have an encounter with Christ, all you want to do is just worship him. You just want to be in that place of worship. They were literally standing right there. It's like, there he is with great amazement. And they just, I can imagine, just fell down and worship because they were in his presence. We can do the same thing is get into that place of worship. Jesus, he flatlined, but his flatline changed history. Because from what he flatlined, he became our lifeline. Meaning that in him, we can have eternal life. That our lineage, our lineage, that we are aligned with the King of Kings. We are in that lineage where it talks about genealogy. When it says, this one begot this one, this one begot there. And I assert my name in there. I'm a child of God because I came to the Father. There is only one door to the Father. There is only one way to gain access, and it's through Jesus Christ. And if you do not know him, do not delay. Do not delay. Because now is the time to say, Lord, I receive you. I receive you. Is what's going to need to happen. You're going to have to die to self in order to have life in him. Our old nature has to be flatlined so the new nature can rise up within him. And I'm going to end with this in Galatians 2 and 20. And it says, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I live, but who lives in me? Christ lives in me. The old me, flat mind. But the new life, new activity, he's given me a new heart. He's taken away that stony, angry, mean heart. And he's given me a heart of love, hope, joy, peace. And I just have to tell somebody what he's done. And we, church, it's our responsibility to be distributors of the word of God. Let's stand to our feet as we get ready to close out in the songs of worship. The altars will be open if you need prayer. And if you're watching online, let us know if you need prayer. What can we pray with you for? We're here. We're a family. And when you're going through something, we want to come alongside you and be that Barbaeus to you. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives. God, we thank you for the resurrected power within you. Lord, we just thank you for how you're moving mightily throughout the kingdom of God and that you are using your vessels, Lord God, that there are many Marys that are going forth and being distributors of the word of God. So, Lord, we take what we know and we go forth and we go and do likewise to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your ultimate sacrifice. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Spend some time worshiping the Lord. Again, the altars are open. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 